Welcome back campers. All right, let's look at a couple more problems with optimization. So from your notes, uh, example two, a rancher has 600 feet of fencing with which to enclose two adjacent rectangular corrals. What dimensions should be used so that the enclosed area will be a maximum? All right, so we're gonna draw a sketch. Well, a sketch of what? Two adjacent rectangular corrals or two adjacent rectangles. So basically just draw one rectangle and put a line down between them. And it doesn't say that they're, you have equal size, so it doesn't have to be right down the middle. It could be over or skewed a little bit uh, in one direction. It doesn't matter. But however you draw it, you still need to label it. So I'm gonna make the entire base X. And the height is going to be Y. Now you have fencing going up and down in three places. So Y on the two sides and Y in the, is also in the middle. All right, so let's get our primary and secondary. So your primary is whatever we're going to try to maximize or minimize. So it says the area will be a maximum. So I need the max of this whole thing. Not the max of each one individually, but the entire field or corral or whatever this is. So your area is still the base, which is X times the height. So your secondary That's again what is associated with the actual value. So you have 600 feet of fencing. Well, where does fencing usually go? Well, it goes around your corral and it also goes down uh, the middle to separate them. So your fencing is going all the way around and down in through here. So that's really a, like a perimeter. So you have two X's, because uh, you have one on the bottom, one at the top, and then you have three Y's and all of that is gonna add up to 600. So pick a variable and solve for it. You can solve for X, solve for Y, it's not gonna matter. Uh, so I went with Y again, but you can choose X if you really, really wanted to. So the Y is gonna equal 200 minus 2 thirds X. Well, now that you know what Y is, you're going to sub it back up into the primary because we want our function to be just in terms of one variable because then the derivative is going to be easier to calculate. So plug in the y and let's go ahead and distribute. Two hundred x minus two thirds x squared. You don't have to distribute. If you leave it like this, you're going to use the product rule. If you distribute, then you don't have to use the product rule. But either way you go, you are going to find a derivative. So the derivative of this, or if you used the product rule, is going to eventually be two hundred minus four thirds x, and we're going to set that equal to zero. Solve for x, and x is going to be 150 feet. So it asks in the, in the problem what dimensions. So it just wants to know the length of the base and the height. It doesn't care about the actual, you know, what the area is the area is you just got to get the the dimensions so if x is equal to 150 you can plug that in for x here and the y is going to equal 100 and those are your dimensions you, if you wanted to you can get the area just to cover your bases if you're not sure what it's asking uh, but in this one you don't need it it's not wrong if you find it just you just did extra work 
Okay, so let's try example three. So a rectangle is bounded by the x and the y axis and the graph of y equals uh, six minus x all divided by two. Well, just split it. Six over two is three. Negative x over two is like negative one half x. That's a little bit easier to kind of deal with. So here's your line and here's your rectangle. So it's bounded by the x and the y axes and also the line. So the corner is what's hitting the line. So it's hitting the line at the point x comma y. So that means the base is x and the height is y. Okay, so let's get our primary and our secondary. So the area is a maximum, so that's your primary. And it's the area of the what? The rectangle. So x, y. Secondary, hmm, this is what's usually set equal to a number. Huh. Well, the key thing about that was usually set equal to a number, not always. Sometimes they actually give you the secondary without stating it. And the secondary is our equation of the line right there. Y equals three minus one half X. So if you ever have the graph of a curve and they give you what the function is, or the curve, that's usually your secondary equation. Uh, unless they say what's the max of this equation, then that would be the primary. So it's going to be one of the two. Well, this is already solved for y, so let's just use it. So stick it back in to the area. Let's distribute to make the derivative easier. So our derivative is three minus x set to zero and x is equal to three. So now I can plug that in right there. And so if x is three, then y is three over two. So there's your, um, your dimensions for your rectangle, your width and your length. Okay, so that'll be it for this video. The next one, um, we're going to cover example four and just increase the difficulty.